Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Truth Be Told, a unique series by OS.me where we work hard to bring you inspirational stories of people who make this world a better place with their kindness, hard work, talent, and honesty. We go wide and deep to bring you motivation from the unlikeliest of places. On this journey today, we have with us Nupur Sharma, national spokesperson of Bharatiya Janda Party, the ruling party of India. Uh, she's a popular face on primetime debate and a stellar advocate. Please welcome Nupur Sharma. So let's just dive right in. My first question to you, Nupur, is that politics is not something that most youngsters think that they can make a career in, right? Especially for someone who doesn't have any family in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. What made you the first entrant into the fray? So uh, blame yourself for it. <laughs> you were in the group of people who sought me out when, when I was a student at uh, law faculty in Delhi University. And um, I do understand a lot of people actually do not actually continue after student politics. Uh, plus, uh, it's not such a forgiving space. It's not a, a flexible space where everybody can actually you know, make space for themselves. Um, and I mean uh, politics uh, especially. So I think uh, perhaps it was destiny, perhaps it was... Um, the fact that uh, everybody is committed to whatever he or she wants to do, it was perhaps that my commitment paid off. Uh, but what is it that you were looking for when you thought that, okay, I will get into politics and it's not, like you said, a forgiving space or a popular conventional career. So what was it that you thought that you were going to do when you entered politics? So I think, I think for anybody who's out there to do something um, professionally, uh, the moot question that needs to be answered is what drives you? Yes, of course, it is good to be financially independent, which is the reason why I still continue to practice law. But uh, I did not have the kind of uh, tie me down responsibilities that I could not take out time for politics because uh, trust me, it is voluntary. Politics is not uh, a profession which will pay you a remuneration. It's not a salaried job. It is what... Uh, uh, it is what you do out of your passion. It is what what you do for the benefit of others. 99% um, of the times, it's basically me trying to get help to people who really require it. So, uh, yes, it it is actually that. Do you feel satisfied in helping people? Supposing you are good enough wherein party can entrust you with, or a, a big political party, as big as the Bharatiya Janata Party, can entrust you with some kind of responsibility where you are answerable for a lot of things, then I think you do feel that, ha. Huh, uh, kuch objective and goal hai hamari life mein, which is what actually keeps you going on. But you know, at the same time, political scape, like everything else in the world, is highly male dominated. And, uh, but more than other fields, politics does get more toxic at times than everything else in the world. So what has your experience been? BJP throw up a lot of, uh, you know, dynamic and uh, outspoken and doer women and good women leaders. So uh, I'm quite surprised you're asking this question. Yet, uh, if I were to just see it uh, um, at a macro level, at, at the because I see it internally, now to see it at a pan-India level, uh, politics is very male-dominated. I'm not going to lie about that. And um, as far as toxicity is concerned, what isn't toxic? I mean, which field isn't toxic? I mean, you worked uh, in, a, in a big uh, company yourself. Uh, you must be knowing uh, there's office politics as well. Uh, yes, it is a bit more high pitched uh, in politics. It's just that you need to have a stomach to fathom it all. And uh, if you can take it in your stride, and if you are, let's say, aapka wo jo, uh, ek saamne aapke ghode ki naal ki hai, this is your objective, you know, keep at it. And if you are strong enough internally to deal with whatever comes in the package, I think there is, then it's not a place you can say it's not for women. You can actually make your own space. No, absolutely. I hear you. I hear all the uh, data points that you're throwing at me. Despite that, uh, politics does remain male dominated and it is uh, aggressive towards women. You know, when we look at parliamentarians using unparliamentary language for their colleagues, it does, uh, you know, highlight and underscore the point that I just made. And I want to know if you've had any uh, such experiences, which I know you said that you have to walk on with a blinder. Uh, like a horse, but uh, were there any experience that you had and you thought, oh my God, this is something that I could, uh, you know, have never imagined would happen to me? 
what have been some of the most unpleasant uh, experiences? Well, you know, uh, I would say that, um, you know, times are changing, Amira, to be very fair. And uh, people are accepting women uh, if they are uh, outspoken, if, if they can... Um, if they can assertively put their point, if they can lead the way and show the way. And there is no reason whatsoever that anybody should be taking any kind of um, uh, misbehavior, any kind of unparliamentary language, um, ill treatment, uh, meted out to yourself just because of your gender. I mean, that's unfair and that perhaps also illegal, may not be defined so. But um, I would say uh, in public discourse, uh, very soon you'll see a time that men and women are treated unlike. Yes, it's still far, but there will be a time very soon where uh, the amount of respect that you have and the kind of applause that you'll have for a male leader would be the same uh, as for a woman leader. So that would be a political ideal that we are uh, hoping we reach someday. But until mm -hmm. then, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. No matter what mm -hmm. is in work and uh, well, I know that you have a responsibility to defend the party and to speak for the party and to show us a nice picture, but uh, you can't evade the fact that uh, it is still difficult for women to make a career anywhere in the world, but specifically in political uh, landscape. But my question remains that the debate persona that you have, okay, and you've agreed that uh, it's uh, more difficult for a woman debater or somebody who is, uh, you know, really assertive, uh, and is a woman, she faces a lot of sexism. So it's uh, obviously difficult for a woman debater to uh, have a pleasant sauna. But does that affect you? Because when people come up to you and say, or when people have this image of you in their head that you can't uh, approach Nupur because maybe she's aggressive or maybe she'll start fighting me right now. Or when they say that, oh my God, you know, you're so nice. And I didn't know that you, know, you were uh, this kind person and you joke and stuff like that. Does it affect you or how does that affect you? Well, it stopped affecting me. Obviously, um, I would say everybody uh, who watches me on TV and I would say everybody who doesn't know me personally, Meda would think that I'm uh, what I am on television in real life. But life doesn't go like that. That's what I do. Um, in personal life, uh, if that's how I was personally, then a lot of people who are approaching me for help wouldn't approach me. They would be too scared of approaching me for help, right? You step out. How do you come down? How do you, uh, you know, bring yourself down and uh, ground yourself? What do you do to so, calm down? So, Meda, it is actually, like, you know, I feel like pulling out my hair sometimes. Uh, but it is actually, you know, the tempers are really flaring up in debates. I just drink a lot of water and uh, it's really strange. But sometimes I go out for a walk at 12 at night, which is a really odd time to go out. But uh, that's the only time sometimes I get if I don't have gaps between my debates. I just go out for a walk, like a long walk. The temperatures are down, so it's cool. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a bhakt of uh, Srinath Ji and Lord Krishna. So... Uh, more often than not, it's it's Vishnu Sahasranam that I'm listening to. I have some bhajan I'm listening to. Uh, sometimes I listen to some music uh, when I'm in the mood for it. Right. Tell me more about your faith in Lord Krishna and how he comes you and um, you know, your relationship with God. So, uh, you know, Lord Krishna is, is known as like the happy God, like the naughty kid God, the, the one who protects, the one who's compassionate. Um, uh, the one who's uh, so full of love. Um, I'm a Vaishnav. Uh, Vaishnavs are a sect of uh, uh, of my uh, of my caste, and uh, uh, we uh, we treat Lord Krishna as a member of the family. And our seva is like that: if you have a child in your house, how do you look after a child? You you wake up the child, you feed him, you clean him, you change his linen, you change his clothes. Uh, and then you dress him up and also so and then, Gopal, right? Laddu, yeah, Thakurji, yes. So uh, Thakurji. that's yeah, that's what uh, is uh, is that's prevalent like religion at my place, and that's what I've grown up with. I personally do not have the time to do it because even my mom, she will not eat a single piece of food till she has done seva of uh, Thakurji, Naddu Gopalji. 
so uh, she, she's a homemaker so she's got the time and it's pretty much like he's a family member like you know he's he's like my brother at home so it's pretty much like that he's looking after us and see my faith in um my faith in takuji uh, became even deeper uh, two things have happened to me one uh, you know govardhan near uh, mathura govardhan parvat which everybody knows the story that you know he picked it up on his pinky finger so that it won't flood so people would be saved uh, uska na parikrama lagti hai to hum parikrama to lagate hain mm-hmm. main to bachpan se hi laga rahi hu so once wahan pe doodh bhi chadta wahan bhagwan doodh se nahate hain wo doodh ka bahut shauk hai na to doodh chadne ke baad piche i saw my mom as a child put some stones together and my masi is also put some stones together in the structure of like like a like a house or something and i said what are you doing so she said ab tu dekhna ke like you know ghar banega or whatever banega so my dad actually made a, a, a like a, bought his first factory after that so and it happened with my masi is also so the faith goes that deep and then so shrinath ji is also an avatar of uh, uh, lord krishna and the temple is in nadwara near udaipur वहां पे बहुत भीड़ होती है वहां पे आठ तरीके के दर्शन होते हैं एंड माइंड यू इफ श्रीनाथ जी हैज वन वन आउटफिट इट डजंट गेट रिपीटेड एंड कुछ है वहां पे कि आप जाओगे आई डोंट नो आई हैड टीयर्स पोर डाउन एंड इट्स हैपेन टू मी ईच टाइम आई हैव बीन टू श्रीनाथ जी आई डोंट नो व्हाट द कनेक्ट विद गॉड इज बिकॉज़ यू नो वी डू लीड वेरी स्ट्रेसफुल लाइफ्स दैट इज माय एस्केप आई गो टू गॉड टू काम मी डाउन uh to ensure to protect me i mean who else do you have to protect you to protect me to ensure that he is looking out for me uh if i if i'm doing something wrong to stop me from doing something wrong to make the right decisions in life uh he is the one i actually go and confide in and that's i know it's a personal relationship with god but uh, it's what actually keeps me level headed and uh, it helps me through i am to you so are you ready yeah It's a rapid fire. Okay, so, uh, yeah, kind of, but there's no hamper. Okay. Okay. One, and it's not as fun as and gossipy as Karan Johar's. So anyway, okay. what has been the most unpleasant experience of your career? I think I'm yet to see it. A lot of unpleasant things happen to people every day. I'm not the only one. Uh, but the most unpleasant, no, I'm yet to see it. So, what has been the most uh, pleasant one? every time that i'm happy with the work and how so see for people like us who work passionately and are driven by it you know bahut khushi hoti hai agar aap bhi chunav nahi lad rahe suppose i have not contested election 2019 or 2014 but i did work for the elections the kind of emotion and the kind of rush that drives through my my being that oh my god we've been working for it and look it culminated into a bigger win in 2019 that that rush when you see the prime minister accept uh, the mandate of the people i think i felt that in 2019 i was quite sick i have a, a problem of uh, vertigo and spondylitis because you know you're always on the laptop or you're always debating or sitting um and i had like a really bad back ache and i was on tv since 7 am and then when the results became clear and then the prime minister came in the evening i was watching him from uh, the uh, the side of the foyer where he was uh, addressing from and it was raining you know and that moment i cannot i can't forget that you know you're like it was so satisfying i think that's perhaps pleasurable for a person like me that you know jo karne gaye the wo kar diya aur hua so what is somebody's kindness that you still remember Oh, there are too many people who have been very kind to me. <laughs> This is a difficult field. There have been instances that I've been in trouble, then, and I, I'm, I'm very emotional about the senior most people because they have stood by me through thick and thin. And I miss Jaitley Ji. He was, he was exceptionally nice to me when I was in trouble. I obviously cannot reveal how he has helped me out, or I would say, uh, and Amit Bhai, people don't know that uh, our, our honourable Home Minister is. Uh, perhaps very kind to karyakartas uh, and he he understands the value of hard work because he's very hard working himself so i would okay. say that uh, people have been kind to me professionally here they have helped me out so ha- uh, they have guided me and i can forever be uh, at the same time i do feel it's a responsibility that they are giving to me uh, but i yeah. i can't help but uh, acknowledge that uh, they have helped me out and in big or small matters alike
Thank you so much for joining us today, Nupur. It was great to know that politics, which is not necessarily known for kindness, has so many stories of support and empathy and kindness. Mm -hmm.